Hi, I want to introduce you to the part two short essay question or SEQ for the New York State U.S. History Regents. I'm going to be focusing on the first set, which is the relationship between two documents. So in the first set of the short essay questions, your prompt will always be the same. You have two essay prompts. You need to describe the historical context surrounding these documents and identify and explain the relationship between the events and or ideas found in these documents such as cause and effect or similarity difference or turn in point. So before I get into the example, I want to talk to you a little bit about the rubric. So I've broken down the rubric to make it more accessible for students. So one of the biggest issues I see is when students are writing about the historical context, they write just what the document is about, and they're not necessarily talking about historical context. So my recommendation is to have a body paragraph about the historical context and then a body paragraph about the relationship. So in the first body paragraph where you discuss the historical context, you should think about who's involved in the events um, surrounding those two documents. When is this happening? Where did it happen? What happened? Why did it happen? And how did it happen? And then you're going to use information from the documents to approach that. So to have mastery, so to get those top scores, you need to explicitly state um, and provide descriptions from both documents about the historical context. So you need to fully explain the content needed to understand the circumstances that led to the events represented in the document. So you're not talking about necessarily the documents themselves and what's in them, but what led to the circumstances of the events represented in that. And you should be looking at all six of those W questions and then of course no inaccuracies. Um, and I modified this from um, teacher Michael Paul Wambacher, so thank you. A little shout out there. And then I also have gone ahead and I broke down the relationship rubric. So you need to explicitly explain the relationship between the events or ideas found in the two documents. You have to have information from outside those documents, right? So outside information and support the theme with many relevant facts and or examples from the documents. Again, no, excuse me, no inaccuracies. So my recommendation is to never do direct quotes unless you absolutely have to and you can't say it any other way. Otherwise, you should be going ahead and paraphrasing. So in our example from the state, our first document is a press conference with President Dwight Eisenhower from April 7th, 1954. And then our second document is the Tonkin Golf Resolution presented in Congress August 7th, 1964. So one of the first things that I would do when I'm looking at these documents is always look at the sources, look at the dates, so they're about a decade apart. I would think about what's going on in that era. And as I read the documents, I would think about what is the document about? What's the time period or era that this has taken place? So for my class, I would think about what's, what's the unit? What's the unit of study we did that this really connects to? Um, and then start thinking about those connections here. So in this case, President Dwight Eisenhower is given this speech in 1954, and he's talking about the domino theory, right? So he's concerned about if you have this row of dominoes set up and you knock one over, you know, they're all going to fall over. And he's talking about Southeast Asia or Indochina in, in, in this case. So I know, okay, President Eisenhower is talking about the Cold War. This is a Cold War conflict. There's this concern that if communism spreads in Southeast Asia, that other nations in Southeast Asia are going to fall to communism. That's the historical context. That's what you're going to talk about. Now, you can go long term or more short term. So you could always talk about um, the fact that the uh, 
you know, Korean conflict or Korean war is going to end up with uh, the Korean Peninsula divided in half. There's this consideration of, you know, what if additional countries in Southeast Asia become communism and this could impact the U.S. influence in the region even further. And that's that's kind of scary. And then ultimately, this is going to lead to that joint resolution, which will then authorize the president to take action in the region. Um, so you want to keep things like that in mind. You're not just going to summarize what the documents are about for historical context. Now, the second one, you need to explain, um, identify and explain a relationship. So for me, looking at this, if this is a president being concerned about the spread of communism, and then about 10 years later, a document from Congress authorizing the president to take action in the same region, obviously this is a cause and effect situation. Now, often with these documents, you'll probably be able to do multiple relationship connections. You wanna do the one that's gonna make sense that you can defend with evidence. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, skip through this. I will post this with our this resource if you want to check them out. But I'm going to go ahead and look at the anchor paper. So I know um, for my students, I tell them there's two bullets, do two paragraphs. You do not have to do an introduction and conclusion on the short essay question. Nothing really says that you need two separate body paragraphs. I just like to separate them out to ensure that, hey, this first body paragraph is historical context and the second one's the relationship. And that way you make sure you're hitting both of those points. This is an anchor paper level five. So this is from the New York uh, Department of Regents. A level five is the top score that they can receive. And keep in mind that this doesn't mean it's necessarily perfect. It's just hidden all the points on the rubric that you need to. So in the post-World War II era, there are, were nations that operated on capitalism or communism. As Soviet Union continued to expand and spread its influence throughout Eastern Europe and Asia, the United States abandoned its traditional isolationism and along with NATO and CETO, attempted to contain communism. I'm going to pause there. He's going into, or they're going into the historical context here. They're talking about communism now going to lead to them. I'm not going to read this whole thing to save time, but I'm going to go ahead and skip to the second paragraph. So these two documents represent a strong cause and effect relationship. So they have identified it, right? It's cause and effect. Don't leave us guessing when we're trying to grade your paper. So it's a strong cause and effect relationship regarding the United States determination to contain communism in Indochina, specifically in Vietnam, between the communists and North Vietnamese against the U.S.-backed South Vietnam, right? So he's like, here it is. This is the relationship. And then they're going to go on to explain what that relationship is. They are talking about the documents, but they're also identifying the documents. So it's very clear to us. I always say, reference the document by name or author or describing what it is, but also at the end, cite the document number because when we're grading hundreds of these over multiple days, it helps us kind of see and be like, oh, that's document one and we don't miss anything. Again, it continues to go on to that explanation and then they just kind of wrap this up. The Gulf of Tonkin Resolution is an important example of a congressional action resulting from the widely held domino principle the cause and effect relationship in the document show the United States changing from communist critic to military action to halt the spread of communism. Again, this is separated out as the example. My recommendation is two body paragraphs. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter as long as it makes sense. It's chronological and you are hitting all those task points. And if you aren't certain, let me see if I can go back and find this the rubric. Oh, here's the score of five. So they have developed all um, aspects of the task in, in depth. It's more analytical, right? So they're going into the how and the why, not just really basic who, what, when, where. And it's bringing in outside information and it's supporting the theme with relevant facts and examples from those documents. So they've done what they needed to do here.